Today we have the Linux kernel turning 34 years old. All thanks to some clueless person who decided they could build their own kernel from scratch. Quite an ambitious feat, yet 34 years later, we are celebrating another birthday. The initial release here, August 25th, 1991, makes Linux 34 years old. And at this point, Linux has had an enormous impact on both society and technology. Ever since its humble beginnings in 91, it has proven that free and open source software could be developed and openly built by a global community. This has much shifted the software industry from closed proprietary models almost exclusively more towards open collaboration, as we see nowadays. With even proprietary companies contributing to open source now, it's used in everyday devices, Android smartphones, embedded systems, desktop computers, servers, what have you, and it's quite amazing to see how far Linux has come. Linux, which is a family of open source Unix-like operating systems based on the Linux kernel, an operating system kernel first released on September 17, 91 by Linus Torvalds, Linux is typically packaged as a Linux distribution distro, which includes a kernel and supporting system software and libraries, most of which are provided by third parties to create a complete operating system designed as a clone of Unix and released under the copyleft GPL license. And this all stemmed from a clueless person named Linus Torvalds, who at 21 years of age had a highly ambitious goal, although initially just a hobby, who would have known what it would become decades later. Here's a quick short for you of Linus talking about how some young clueless person might do the same thing here in the future. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, nothing lasts forever. And uh, I'm sure some clueless young person will decide how hard can it be and start his own operating system in Rust or in something else. And, and if he keeps at it for many, many decades, or she, and many, many decades, hey, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. So it's quite fascinating as that clueless person was Linus back then. And we actually have some insight to what Linus was like back then and how this all started. As he calls it just a hobby, this was the first post that Linus made on a group called Newsgroups Comp.OS Mini X. And this is the first time we see Linus mention Linux, which is quite fascinating that we have this history. And even to this day, Linus is set in his ways with even using old school ways of programming. Here's another short I'm gonna show you about the current text editor that he uses. And I know the editor is crap and I maintain it because it's a dead project that nobody else uses. So I have a source tree and I compile my own mm -hmm. version every time I install a new machine. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I would suggest nobody ever use that editor, but I can't, I've tried. I tried multiple times finding an editor that is more modern and does fancy things like colorize my source code and yeah. do things like that. And every time I try it, I'm like, yeah, I, these, these hands are too old for this. <laughs> yes. Right. So, so I really hope there is no project that comes along that makes me go, I have to do this. That's right. Can you believe that Linus is still using micro Emacs without any syntax highlighting and no recent tooling that's been developed? It's like playing programming on legendary mode it's quite fascinating, but let's get into the first email that set everything into motion for Linux back when Linus was still a university student in Helsinki. Let's read through this. This was created August 25th, 1991. That was a Sunday around 4.57 p.m. Linus Torvalds sends out a post for discussion in Computer OS MiniX. Hello, everybody out there using MiniX. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be big and professional like GNU, which we all know now that was a lie. For 386, 486 at clones, this has been brewing since April and it is starting to get ready. I'd like any feedback on things people like or dislike in Mini X, as many operating systems resemble it. Same physical layout of the file system due to practical reasons, among other things. I've currently ported Bash 1.08 and GCC 1.40, and things seem to work. This implies that I'll get something practical within a few months, and I'd like to know what features most people would want. Any suggestions are welcome, but I won't promise I'll implement them. Smiley face. Signed off, Linus, 
as he still signs off in a very similar way to this day. And as we've followed him in the past in the Linux kernel mailing list, PS, yes, it's free of any Miniax code and it has a multi-threaded file system. It is not Protable. It uses 386 task switching, etc., and it probably never will support anything other than at hard disk, and that's all I have. And it's really amazing when you stop and think about that this single Usenet post that we just read through was a young curious student who made a hobby operating system, ended up making one of the most significant revolutions in technology, society, and open source. It's wild. This was all supposed to be a small personal and limited project, yet 34 years later, it is amazing what the open source and Linus have created. As it's ended up spreading like wildfire between universities, startups, and even now into massive corporations, that hobby project became the foundation of many, many companies and open source projects. And 34 years later, Linus Torvalds is still as active as he's ever been, which goes to say something about the consistency that he's brought to Linux. One of the major reasons that it has stayed together this long is all thanks to the ambition of Linus and working with other people in the open source space. So I want to thank Linus Torvalds and every contributor who has poured their time and hard work into open source. This simple hobby has grown into an amazing powerhouse. Because of Linus's vision and persistence, millions of people can now learn, build, and create freely. He didn't just write code. He gave the world a model of collaboration, openness, and possibility. Without you, we wouldn't have Linux today, and who knows where open source would be. The world would be a different place. Also, again, thanks to all the maintainers and devs who have put countless hours and effort into building out not only the Linux kernel, but all the open source projects that have followed in its footsteps. Best wishes to you all, and here's to another 34 years. I also want to understand how Linux and open source have impacted your life. Let's talk about it in the comment section below. Also make sure to thank Linus, the Linux community and developers for their dedication as well. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoy videos about Linux and tech, don't forget to subscribe below. Smash that like button so more people can see what Linux has become. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.